hey guys, it's Maris. Welcome back to my channel where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing another I didn't want to read it, but I'm making myself read it vlog. Um, I've picked out three books that I think are really good contenders for this. The first one being All My Colors by David Quantic, Woman Eating by Claire Coda, and Sanctuary. Uh, by V.V. James. This is a very old book. I've had this book for five, six years now. I got it in the Lumicrate. This is why it has this really pretty um, painted edges. And it also comes with this very nice letter from the author, which is so cool. Um, so we're gonna be reading these today, just 20 pages, just to get you know, the first impression, the feel, like, is this a book that I want to keep reading? Is it not pulling me in? You know, whatever comes up. But before we jump into that video, I wanted to mention something to you about the book Hidden Pictures. So one of my patrons sent me a message saying that some readers feel that this book is transphobic and that has like a, a, a right wing agenda to it. I do need to share a really big spoiler for this book. So. If you don't want to know what that spoiler is, you can go ahead and just skip this part to the next chapter, but I will give you a minute to make your decision. <laughs> okay, so in the book, um, the main plot is that there is a woman who steals a female child. She's like five years old. She abducts her from her mother and she takes this child to be her own, but uh, dresses her up as a boy instead of a girl and gives her a boy's name. To me, that felt like she was doing it because uh, she's a criminal and she's trying to hide her crime. So if she can make this kid not look like a kid that is missing, you know, she'll be able to get away with it. And by the end of the story, when she's returned back to her uh, biological family, she chooses to be who she was before she was abducted. So she chose her feminine name and she's wearing feminine clothing. The other part is um, Mallory, the main character. She was a drug addict, so she went into rehab and that was a uh, Christian-based rehab. Most facilities in the United States, I believe, are Christian-based. So it sort of made sense to me that she would continue with this because it's kind of part of the it's part of the rehab journey of staying sober. I didn't feel that she pushed her religion onto this family that she was going to be working for. I grew up in a home where there was no religion. Um, so this is something that I am very, um, kind of uh, very cognizant of because since I didn't grow up with religion, I do feel like I just notice it more. You know, like if I feel like it's, you know, trying to do anything, like, you know, kind of wedge itself into places or manipulate or whatever. Like, I feel like I'm pretty aware when that's happening. Not all the time, but most of the time. Um, so I did kind of understand like that concern there. But for this one, I felt like it wasn't, you know, she wasn't really pushing it in my eyes. So I'm not trans. That is not my lived experience. And I don't feel comfortable speaking on the behalf of a community that I'm not a part of because I feel like that's uh, overstepping a boundary. But I'm always willing to learn and to understand better. So if you've read this book, if you think that, yes, it does have these themes, it'd be awesome if you could share with us in the comments what that is so that I can learn and we could learn and uh, just understand these things better. And of course, please be kind in the comments. I really do believe that kindness is a better way to learn. I think it's going to make the other person just more um, reciprocal, I guess, to learning something new. And and it's just, it's just nicer overall. <laughs> so thank you so much to Em for sharing this with me. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Before we get started, be sure to like and comment down below and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, but would like to. So like I was saying, we're gonna give each one of these books 20 pages. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I didn't wanna read these books. So I got this in one of my really early Abominable Book Club boxes. And I don't, I, I will admit, I don't like the cover. I don't like it at all. But 
The cover is important, but it's not as important as the synopsis. And this synopsis is, I don't know, I read it and I was just like, I don't, I'm not, there's no glasses in here for me to fall into. You know, there's nothing here that I'm like, okay. So this is basically about a guy who's like really unlikable. Like he's just kind of a jerk, like nobody likes him, but he somehow has this book, this whole entire com complete book in his mind finished and it's all my colors but it's not a published book it's just somehow gave birth in his brain like i don't know i don't know what the story is but then i guess he decides to like write it and to make money off it and become an author even though he can't write so that's kind of the premise of the story so i'm not sure there is this like really weird quote here though from um a, an author and it says an unholy godchild of early Stephen King, Lovecraft, and Borges, or Borges. Not sure what that means. We're going to give this 20 pages. This is also, um, this author, David Quantic, is also the writer of The Thick of It and Veep. Never seen those shows either. <laughs> so no idea what I'm getting myself into, but let's go ahead and take 20 pages and see what's up. My, my prediction is that I'm not going to like it. That's my prediction so far. All right. Okay, so I've just finished 20 pages, so I finished at page 29. Um, so it's definitely kind of funny and ironic. It's definitely like sort of like self-aware a little bit. It's about this guy. So I, I thought that he wasn't a writer, but he is a writer. He's just not a good one. And he's never been published. He's a drunk. You know, he's having an affair. <laughs> he like treats his friends like shit uh, because mainly he has this one power, which is that he can recall. Like He has this like memory that he can just recall text really easily. So he's really good throwing quotes at people and he uses them sort of like a weapon in all of his conversations with his friends who are you know they're they're also alcoholics you know they're, they're also writers um but he this is kind of like his way of sort of uh keeping them in check i guess um so it's very irritating because you can tell that he definitely likes to use this as a as a power um, so he's not a very likable character, like at all, just like right out the bat. Um, his wife leaves him because obviously he's a great guy. A bunch of his writer friends came to his house. They all got drunk and he started reciting this, uh, a part of this story. And all of his writer friends were like, I don't know what that is. And he's like, are you serious? It's called All My Colors by Jack Turner. You don't know what this guys are. You guys are idiots, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and they're just like, no, we don't. So he kind of goes on this rampage to sort of see if he can find this book at his uh, favorite bookstore that he goes to. So this is also taking place in the 1970s. So this is when like the bookstores were these labyrinths, you know, they were dark, they were dusty. They had like just one guy <laughs> operating it and he knew like all the books from heart, you know? Um, my dad used to go to a place like that when I, I can remember being like three or something and going to this dingy, dark, dusty bookstore. And it, 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 in hindsight, it was pretty creepy in there, but I loved it. <laughs> so anyway, it's 70s, so he can't just look it up on his phone. He can't do like a search or anything, um, but he can't find it. So now he's like, what is inside of me? And I, I guess this is, you know, gonna be the turning point of him, you know, deciding to use it to become a writer finally. Um, uh, and also that it's probably something, maybe it's something cosmic or something horror based, not sure. This cover is a sort of an actual, uh, mm, like a interpretation of like the, what the book is supposed to look like, the All My Colors book inside of the story. Uh, it looks, they describe her hair as being a colorful hydra and she has her eyes scratched out. So I don't know. Um, 
it's it's not bad. It's, it's it's definitely better than I thought it was. I'm not sure it's my thing though, um, but I do think that a lot of people would probably like it. Um, it is sarcastic. It's ironic. It's kind of funny. Um, but I don't really know. I don't really see myself reaching for this before any of my other, you know, <laughs> very carefully picked out uh, spooky horror books, you know. But it is not as bad as I thought. That's something. Okay, so let's switch gears. And that one was a little bit of like, I don't really know, you know, what kind of genre, what kind of horror genre it is. But this one is Vampires. Um, Woman Eating by Claire Coda. Coda? This is about a woman named Lydia who is a vampire and she has a huge hunger. She doesn't want to drink from humans. So I'm gonna go ahead and read 20 pages of this and I will be right back. I had to replenish some of my candles. Come closer. So far we meet this girl named Lydia and she is renting this studio. It's not an apartment, it's like a actual studio studio. And um, we get to learn a little bit about her and her mom. Her mom is now living at a, a old person's uh, care home now and her mom seems to be very upset, you know, that, that her daughter is not gonna stay with her. It's, I can't really tell if it was like dementia or something, but she's just very like, don't go, you know, do you hate me? Don't go. <laughs> so they definitely have some history. And um, we learned that both of them are vampires and that for all of Lydia's life and at least uh, her mom, um, while taking care of Lydia, they primarily, they drink uh, pig's blood to survive. There definitely seems to be some self-loathing on her mother's part about what they are. Um, she thinks that they are demonic or you know, disgusting creatures, basically. They can also survive for weeks and months and years at a time, um, never eating. So if they never drink any blood, the worst that happens is that they get weak, they go into a coma, and then they just wait you know, I guess for food to come to them, I don't know. So I don't really have any strong feelings about it. Like I don't feel like, oh yeah, I wanna keep reading, but I also don't feel like, you know, it's terrible or anything. I feel like it's gonna definitely be just like a, a meditation on what it would be like to be a vampire in this day and age and, and how, and what would that look like and, and how would that feel? I don't really love vampires that much. So it's not really like a, a theme for me that I, you know, really get excited about. So I don't think that I will be continue reading this one either. I don't think that I showed you guys this, but I made this little cutie pie ghosty like a couple weeks ago. And I made it out of clay and aluminum foil. And the, the miniature book is like a little book that came along with a, a kit that I had for a unfinished uh, book nook. And the cup was from a Christmas cracker. Like this is what was in it. And if you look really, really closely, it's Mickey Mouse on the cup, which is even cuter. And then there's coffee, well, coffee in the cup, but he's so cute, right? I definitely want to make more of these, like different heights and like doing different things and everything. But this is my first attempt at making a little ghosty figure. I highly recommend it for your mental health. <laughs> So now let's get on to the next one. This is Sanctuary by V.V. James. Um, this is a, th I believe this is a thriller, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what it is. It just sounds like there's a high school accident. Someone who is supposedly the daughter of a witch gets blamed for it and then the town starts going crazy. So let's um, go ahead and give this 20 pages and I'll be right back. I wanted to read to you the author's letter that came with the book. 
It says, have you ever needed to protect someone? Have you ever wanted to hurt someone? Maybe both, I won't tell. What if you could do it with magic? Welcome to the picture-perfect Connecticut town of Sanctuary. It's got charming coffee shops, a gorgeous coastline, and an experienced witch. Oh, and lots of secrets, dangerous secrets. I wanted to write a twisty story about all the things I love, friendship, witchcraft, revenge, and most of all, a story about women owning their power. The women and girls of Sanctuary are flawed and fearless. They love each other and fight for each other and sometimes unbearably betray each other. And after a boy dies, it falls to one decent cop to unravel the truth. Welcome to the coven. Live in your magic. <laughs> it's a very nice letter. This is very fun. It's a... Um, I have a very... You know, a soft spot for like small town mysteries, thrillers, you know, and this one's pretty cool because it does have witches in it. So this starts out with a group of women who are just kind of hanging out together. They're, they've been friends for a really long time. They have a lot of um, uh, like, sh like shared life experiences together. There is something also there that is sort of unsaid and is sort of a secret, but keeps them bonded together. And then one of them receives a phone call that their son, who's the quarterback, has died in a fire at a party. We then get to meet the detective, the female detective that will be on this case. And we find out that there are these rumors about a sex tape. Each chapter is a different first person character. So we have the detective and then we have um, the three women so 20 pages was definitely like not enough, you know, to like get a little bit more into it, but it already kind of let me know that I'm liking this. I'm liking the way the author is sort of teasing out things. I'm liking that this is uh, definitely one of these small town uh, mysteries also with some police figures trying to, um, you know, like if you have a small town and you got your star quarterback and, uh, something's happened to him, you don't want anyone tainting his reputation. Well, you know, we don't want to do that. Oh, now we definitely want to do that. We definitely want to be digging. So this is great. I think this is going to be a really great mystery. How much the witch aspect plays in, I think it plays in a lot because when um, I got this Illuminacrate, which was like <laughs> a while ago, it came with a bunch of um, like merch items and they were all really heavily witchified, okay? You know, it was just like a lot of witchy stuff. So I definitely think that the witch theme is going to be very strong and something that's obviously explored and it will be a big part of the story. So those were my three books that I didn't want to read and I've got one book out of there that I, I'm definitely going to want to finish. That is definitely a Baltic Sea book. Ugh, just... I'm already like feeling it right now. I'm like, mm, that long train ride and those dark gloomy nights. Ah, oh, it's gonna be perfect for that. Meanwhile, uh, right now I'm reading uh, Gallows Hill in a buddy read, group read um, on my Discord. So if you are a patron, you wanna join us, um, let's, you can just hop right in. We're at chapter, or I'm at chapter 16 at the moment. But I'm starting this and I was expecting to kind of be underwhelmed, but I think I'm, I think I'm liking it. It depends of course on how it's going to end, but I'm really digging it so far. And the other thing I'm reading is outside. I'm reading this at night <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> um, it's my little kitty cat lamp. And this is, this is fun, man. This is so cool. It is digging everything about it. I can't wait to talk about it more. Hopefully you found something here that you want to read today, even though two out of the three books, you know, weren't for me, but I always like to think that one reader's DNF is another reader's top read. You know, you never know. Um, reading is such an experiential, personal thing. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.